there are many small rocks on Mamalapurat beach. Sometimes the sea rages and the waves crash on the cliffs. Sometimes the sea recedes and allows the reefs to dry out. The great sculptors of Mamalapurat did not leave a single stone of them idle. They envisioned scenes large and small to suit their respective rocks and set up imperishable sculptures. Aditha Karikalan and the other two approached the place where two such small rocks were opposite each other. They got down from the chariot. Considering the two rocks as two thrones, Karikalan and Malay Aman sat down. Parthipendra stood a little beyond them. Often the waves came and drenched them up to their knees. As the waves hit the rocks, the waves sometimes showered them like pearls. A short distance away, row upon row of boats tore up the sea, laden with various goods. The food was being unloaded from the boat and loaded into large wooden cells with sails spread. It makes my heart boil to think that all the goods collected for the dual zone invasion will have to go to Sri Lanka. Said Parthipendra. What is going on then? There are soldiers in Sri Lanka who have taken over from the Chola country. They are winning after victory in the battlefields. For a thousand years, the kings of Sri Lanka have conquered in Aradapura and hoisted the victory flag. Should such soldiers be left to starve to death? Said Aditha Karigalan. Who said that we should leave it like that? Foodstuffs should be sent. But we should go from the Chola country to the port of Nagapatanam. Or from the Pandya country to Sitakare. Why is it necessary to leave this dry throat region? Moreover, I thought that this would hinder our invasion to the north. Said Parthipendra. Thinking about it makes my heart boil. I don't know what the purpose of those evil avengers is. How long have you endured all this? Grandfather. Why are you still silent? Open your mouth and say something. Said Carrie Gallon. Child. These waves of the sea keep shouting oh. Competing with the sea waves, your friend Parthipendran also shouts. What am I talking about in the middle of this? I too am getting old. Said Malay Aman Malajadiar. Parthipendra. Be still for a while. Let Grandpa speak his mind. Said Aditha Karigalan. Here I have kept my mouth shut. Alas! My grandfather has come down from the mountain fort at a tender age and has struggled so far. Shall I open my mouth in front of him? This sea has no sense at all. It is raging relentlessly. There is no one to stop it. It seems that Samadra Rajan has no fear of our mountain king. Said Parthipendra. Their aim is to weaken you and your brother individually. Your brother Aralmazai must fail in Sri Lanka. So shame on him. Here you must be angry with your brother. You two have to fight. This old man must be pained to see it. This is their secret purpose, Malajati R said angrily and Kari Kalan interrupted the visit. They will never succeed in this purpose, Grandfather. No one can separate my brother and me. I will give up my life for grace. Every now and then I think, shall I board the ship and go to Ceylon? What he is suffering there. I will eat comfortably here and dress in the palace. I pass the time in sleep. My sword and sword are rusting. Every moment is an age to me. I do not like to be here. Grandfather. Tell me. Shall I go to Ceylon on one of these cargo ships? Carrie Kalin asked. My lord. Great idea. You are saying what I have been thinking for days. Let's go, come. There is no use in asking grandfather for advice. If you ask him, no wait. That's what Buddy Maitai would say. We can leave tomorrow. We can take half of the Thonde Mandal force. We can end the Sri Lankan war in one way and land directly in Nagapatanam. Parthipendra exclaimed. Karikala. See? What did I say earlier? Didn't I say that I would only speak if he kept his mouth shut? I'll shut up, Grandpa. Say whatever you say. Parthipendra covered his mouth with his hand. Karikala. You are a brave warrior. Not many people have been born as brave as you even in this heroic Tamil Nadu. I have seen many great battlefields in my eighty years. 
but I have never seen another warrior who entered the enemy's crowd and fought like you. You were not even sixteen years old when the great battle of Severb took place. At that age I have never seen the speed with which you burst through the crowd of enemies, the speed with which you swung your sword to and fro, and the speed with which the heads of your enemies rolled. I still have that scene standing before my eyes. Your friend Parthivendra is a valiant warrior like you. But both of you are nervous, quick-tempered. So your thinking power decreases. It appears to be doing the opposite of what it should be doing. Grandfather. You have preached this kind of thing many times before. I did. But you say it didn't help? Are you telling me to go back to town without speaking? No, no. Now tell me what must happen. Your brother Arulmazai must be brought here immediately. You and your brother must never be separated. Grandfather. What is this idea? If Arulmazai comes here, what will happen to the Sri Lankan war? The Sri Lankan war has now reached a stage, and Aradapura has been taken. It is now the rainy season. Nothing can be done for four months. It is necessary to defend the captured ground without giving up. This will be done by the other generals. It is very necessary for Arulmazai to be here at this time. Karikala. In covering up the truth what is the use? Doom has befallen Vijayalaya Chola's clan and the Chola empire he founded. You and all your people must stay in one place and be careful. We must gather all our strength. We cannot tell when and what kind of danger will come. Grandfather. Why are you scaring me like this? What am I afraid of as long as I have a sword in my hand? What if any danger comes? I will stand on my own and deal with it. I am not afraid of any danger. Son. Do you want to tell me what kind of brave you are? However, sometimes you should consider what Lord Thiruvalluvar had said. That sage has said. There should be no fear when fighting against enemies on the battlefield. He who fears so is a coward. If a child is born in my dynasty who is afraid like that, I will cut him off with the weak hand of this child. But beware of hidden conspiracies and intrigues and unseen dangers. Be afraid and take precautions as appropriate for your situation. Those who are born in the royal clan and are entitled to the throne should not be careless in this matter. If so, the country will be ruined. Grandpa. What kind of secret dangers do you expect? Just a little explanation so we can beware. Let me tell you. A few days ago, a meeting was held at the Sambuvarayar mansion in Kadampur at the time of Artharithri. The great Palyavatarayar was present. Also ten Avan Mazavarayar, Kundre Thirgkiar, Vanangamudi Mundayarayar, Anjatha Singhamutharayar, Dudlakude Rajalayayar, all of them were present. These are the names that came to my ears. Many others may have come. Come on, so what? They'll all be up to midnight watching the frolicking and frolicking, eating to their stomachs, and drinking the scum of the Midami Deve and going to sleep. What about that? What will all those bearded and moustached grey lads you mentioned get together and talk about? If you have such a good opinion of the boys, what's the point of me saying? I'm an old man too? I'm a more charitable old man than all of them. Grandfather. Don't be angry. Shall I join you with those unarmed children? Well, tell me what happened then. You're saying that again, the old man, the chief among them, got married only a few days ago. And know that there is no young man in the world as dangerous as an old man who marries a young woman. A strange change took place in Aditha Karakalan's face when the talk of the old man's marriage began. His eyes suddenly became red and awakened like a Kshatra deity asking for a blood sacrifice. Lips twitched. Teeth gritted. Malayaman did not notice all this. But Parthipendra took care. What is that talk of marriage now for, sir? Tell me what then happened in the palace of Sambuvarayar, said the Pallava hero. That's what I came to say, but I'm getting old, aren't I? I'm losing my wits and going somewhere else. Listen, Karikala. Parthipendra. Listen too. 
that midnight gathering was not only a gathering of old men. Some youths were also there. One was Sam Bavarian's son Kanamaran. Another. Seeing the hesitation. Who, grandfather? Who else? Carrie Gallen asked provocatively. Your great father is the son of Kandaradatha, your stepfather, Madhurandak Deva. On hearing this, Aditha Kari Kalan and Parthapendra laughed heartily. What is this laugh? What is the meaning of this laugh? Are you pitying me again? Asked Malajati R. No, grandfather. No. You call Madhurandhagan a boy? That's why we laugh. Isn't he a bud of charity in all his roots? A ripe bud of Shiva wisdom. Said Aditha Kari Gallan. Haven't you heard that old men sometimes regain their youth? Similarly, Madhurandhagan has regained his youth. He who was saying I am going to become a monk, I am going to do Sivaka Ingariam until a few days ago, is getting married one, two, three times, isn't he? Let it be done. Let there be many more marriages, so what? Brother. Madhurandhagan's marriages are not ordinary marriages. Royal marriages. Marriages belonging to the secret intrigues of the Pallavatarayas. Grandfather. Why are you still talking mysteriously? Tell me. What do the Pallavatarayas want? What is the purpose of them going from town to town and gathering? What are they trying to do with Madhurandaka Deva? Asked Aditha Kari Gallan. Nothing else. They have made it clear that you and your brother have no right to the kingdom and they intend to place Madhurandha on the throne of the Chola country. They are keeping him imprisoned in Tanjore Fort just to get your father's consent," said Malajati R.